My first computer was a Commodore PET. There's an 8K of memory, I think a 16K expansion board. I did not need to worry very much about security in the late 70s, but then by the 80s uh, and into the 90s, you had to deal with uh, computer viruses on floppy diskettes. And then in the 2000s, actually having Trojans get dropped on my, my desktop, pushing casino websites, and I guess it was the internet was the big thing that changed the equation there, right? You know, all of a sudden I've got threats that aren't coming by sneaker net or by trading data with other people. It's just me browsing a website with the internet more online accounts, more passwords, everything kind of changes at that point. I have, I've, I'm dealing with protecting my computer from outside threats. I'm concerned about my home network. I'm concerned about where is my information? How much information am I putting into the things that I'm signing up for? And what are the passwords I'm using to manage those services? And that hasn't stopped until today. And then today, uh, a lot of things have changed. A lot of things are more secure in some ways, but still the fundamental problems remain the same. With the rise of legislation that attempts to bring the control back to the users, many organizations nowadays have specified how they handle your data. But do you even know what data you are giving in the first place? Online privacy, like many things online, is an abstract concept. Our brains haven't quite fully understood that our online existence and real life is no longer separate. They are one and the same. And until we understand this, and until we treat our online existence the same way as we do our real lives, then we would never feel the gravity, the effect of online privacy. For example, in real life, if we meet somebody, anybody, are we naturally willing to share any fact about ourselves? And let's say you, for instance, are a very open person and you would just do this. Do you expect them to just turn their backs and then share this with someone else? This is what's happening online when organizations are sharing our information with third parties. Most of the time when we agree to the terms and conditions, this is exactly what we're signing up for. Is it really their business to know if you're pregnant or if you're sick or if this is your favorite highway that you go through when you go from home to the office every day? Being vigilant means taking back some of this control. And if you feel that you want to have an option, that for example, when you visit a certain website, you would like to have more privacy or you would like to eliminate it completely, with just a click of a button, wouldn't you want to have this option? The very first mention of passwords was during the ancient times where Roman soldiers are using this password-like system called a watchword uh, to identify if a person is a friend or an enemy. They pass this uh, sort of password around to the soldiers guarding the gates to their fort. The initial use of passwords in computers uh, started off as a way to uh, segregate files between user sessions. But now, the passwords are an essential part of security. It has become a common advice to have a password that is strong and unique, something that is long, a mix of alphanumeric, special characters, and some capitalization. Fortunately, password managers were created to help us. They come in different forms and features. Common among them is that they store multiple passwords and encrypt them. Remembering them requires a memory attention of an elephant. For us humans, we have password managers to give us the protection and convenience in this connected world. I think I've inventoried my network. At least two dozen different devices are capable of being connected. The way that I practice security, I don't normally keep most of those things connected or on. I turn it off if I'm not using it and the Wi-Fi gets shut off. But there's at least five different devices that are always connected, like smart lights at home versus my television is always kind of turn it on, it immediately connects to the router. If you've got devices that are connected and have an outbound connection to the internet, um, they may also have an inbound connection, and then someone can get into your network through that device. And if you're not actively using it, but you're keeping it plugged in, or you don't have something that's kind of monitoring it, it could be access to somebody to get inside of your home network. And from that insecure device, they could go target one of your more secure devices. With home networks and with smart devices, I don't have a lot of smart home tech in my home at the moment. I don't play around with, with just adding things to my network. One of the limitations of 
of um, this kind of tech though, is that it, it's, it's geared towards me as the administrator. Uh, so I've got smart lights, I've got apps. Um, you connect the app by physically pushing the hub that controls the lights, and then great, I'm in charge. But if I put that app on my child's device and connect them to the hub and do the same process, they also become an admin uh, as opposed to a user. And so a lot of this technology doesn't allow for sort of uh, a graduated level of, of use. It's like, it's like, I'm in charge or everybody's in charge. And, and there's where we could use some tools and services to like help you identify what's on your network. Because if you are limited to having everybody as an admin, uh, you really probably ought to have more resources that really actually make you the admin when you've got these things in your home. Because people, um, you know, such as children, want to be able to use the lighting. But if they're updating the firmware and are doing other things, connecting things to your home network, um, you, the actual admin, probably need to know about this. It's not going to be like any less that gets added to your network in the future. It's going to be more and more things. And uh, as your family gets bigger, so will the devices on your network, uh, the amount of devices on your network. Thank you for watching. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't feel like liking, sharing, and subscribing, remember, you can also hack us. We have a bug bounty. And if you are able to break into our services, we will pay you money. Good luck, and I'll see you online.